Rub up your engines! The King says, Scotty, how do you feel about the all new electric Hummers coming soon? All right, well, I guess if you like spending an awful lot of money, because they start at over $100,000, right? And it's GM. GM and electric cars, ones they have to tell me, don't drive them, park them. They're burning down to the ground. I certainly wouldn't buy one. I mean, I'd never spend that kind of money anyways, but I would never buy new technology GM until it's been out at least four or five years to see are they falling apart. And they're so expensive anyways. And they can say, oh, it's got this giant range, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, that's what the engineers say, right? Wait a People have been say, like I saw a guy in Canada, the Tesla was supposed to go all these, you know, 200 something miles. He said he towed his boat and he got 90 miles and he was down to a third of the power and he couldn't even drive the boat back home. He had to recharge it before he went home and it was only 90 miles away. So don't believe the hype. You got to see how it actually works when they're out for years and see how they hold up. I'd never buy one. Not until they've been out for a long time. Sean M says, Scotty, when did they stop painting engines instead of putting plastic covers over them? Well, they stopped painting them quite some time ago. And for interest's sake, when I was a young mechanic, the engines actually had a serial number that matched the car. They don't do that anymore. Back in the day, you bought a car, you could see, gee, was the engine changed? It's a different serial number. But today, they don't even put serial numbers on the engines. They just put those stupid plastic beauty covers. And as I tell people, if you live in a hot climate, take it off at least in the summer. It holds heat in, which is great if you're in Alaska to keep the engine warm. But when it's hot outside, you don't want to keep all the heat on the top of your engine. Fuel injectors are plastic. Most of plastic intake manifolds. You want it to cool off better. So they're actually better without them in a hot climb. Mr. Edit said, Scotty, big fan question. Does the 2016 Hyundai Sonata SE need a transmission fluid change at 70,000 miles? I definitely would have. And it is a Hyundai. I personally would change every 30 or 40,000 miles just to be sure. That's a weak point of those vehicles. Fluid is cheap watch my videos I'm changing it stuff you can easily do yourself just make sure you buy the original fluid so it's compatible with what's in it because it's not like changing your engine oil when you change your transmission fluid only 30 percent or sometimes even less comes out every time you drain it and I don't advise flushing it so you want to keep it clean and if you do it every 30 40 thousand miles in Hyundai do it now and then do it every 30 40 thousand miles it's cheap insurance Toeyx says Scotty why would you find oil on top of the spark plugs there's two reasons. Now, let's say you're talking about you take the spark plug boot off and then the spark plug there is all wet with oil. Well, that's a simple one. That means that your spark plug tubes, they have a seal, a rubber oil seal. The seal shot, oil's getting in on top of the spark plug. Take off the valve cover, replace the kit and the spark plug tube. Some of the kits come with the tubes in the gasket, some don't. Make sure you get the one that has the gasket for the cover and the spark plug tube seals too. If the oil's only inside, when you take the spark plug out and only the firing end is wet. That's bad news. That means your engine's burning oil like crazy. Bad valve seals, bad piston rings, really expensive stuff. So price just the top. A lot easier fix. You can go to any auto parts store, buy a gasket kit with spark plug tube seals and change it yourself. It's not that hard to do on most cars. Unless you have something like a Nissan V6 where you got to take the intake manifold off to do the backside. Bad design, but it's a Nissan for you. Jake Friesen says, what do you think about the Nissan Titan XD Cummings? Okay, I'm not that big of a Nissan fan, but they started putting those Cummings diesels in them. They are excellent engines. They can be great vehicles. I've had customers have the Titans before they put the diesels and they were good vehicles too. Now it's a big heavy truck so it's gas hog. Forget gas miles. It's going to be a gas hog. It's made for pulling a bunch of stuff right. But even their gasoline V8s. I have them come over here. They got 180,000 miles. They're still running strong. So unlike the other Nissans of course those are trucks with a big transmission that drives to the rear of the wheels. And those rear wheel drive Nissan transmissions are actually pretty good. It's the front wheel drive ones that are crappy. Well, it says, what year is too old to get a car so you can't get parts for it? Good question, but unfortunately, it depends on the make and model of cars because there's a tremendous aftermarket these days for profit companies that will make parts and sell them. Take Toyota Corolla. You can get parts for a 35-year-old one quite easily, readily. Not that expensive either, but you're getting something like an Alfa Romeo. No, in the United States, it's hard to get parts for them. Doesn't matter how old they are and if they're really old, forget it. So you'd have to do a little research or the same thing with Ford. I had a guy come over here with a Ford Maverick. It was a 75. I could get a starter for it. It was in stock a mile from here at an AutoZone auto parts store. So you got to do a little research of that. Makes models, how the parts are available, because some are and some aren't. That's why I always tell people, buy a model that they sell millions of them for two reasons. If they sell millions of them, they must be pretty good, right? And if there's millions of them, there's a tremendous aftermarket because if people keep driving them, they'll keep making parts because they want to make a profit making parts. There's a tremendous profit in parts. A set of brake pads, right? It might be $42. It's got like 
15 cents worth of material. Tremendous profit in that stuff. So as long as they're still rolling, people will make parts for the popular models. Seth Keith Bellarino says, Scotty, why do the crankshaft bolts break in Hyundai Reina 2020? Well, guess what? Because they're not making them right. <laughs> That's what I tell people. The Korean car manufacturers, they've never got their act together fully. Now, bolts, especially a crankshaft bolt, they have to be made correctly. They're all going to fit, right? But bolts have a level of metallurgy in them that's a level of hardness. And you always want ones that are very high level of hardness. That's the problem if you buy a cheap Chinese made part versus a quality original one, say, that's made in Japan. You get the right hardness, it's never going to break. You get one that's softer, you tighten it too far, it'll snap right off. Can't take that much tension because it's not hard enough and it breaks off. Quality control of nuts and bolts is a very big deal. Most people just think, oh, I can put whatever I want. Well, don't. Let's say you're working on your own car and you lost a bolt and go to a hardware store. You want to check the hardness of the bolt you're buying because if it's crucial like that, you want to get one that's hard enough. Now, I mean, if you're bolting a fender on or something, who the heck cares? Just bolting on a fender. It doesn't mean anything. But moving parts like that or anything to do with the brake system, you don't want the brake snapping off when you snap on the brakes because you got a bolt that was too cheaply made and it snapped off. You want the ones that are made for it with the hardness level that's high. Josiah Miller says, Scotty, should I buy a 2000 13 Chevy Cruze. Only if you hate yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I had a customer with a cruise, and he put a picture of Mickey Mouse on the back window. And I said, what do you have a picture of Mickey Mouse? Mickey Mouse car. It's already gone through two transmissions. And then the third one was going out. Now, granted, the first two, at least, it was still under warranty. And GM said they fixed them, repaired them. Well, obviously, they didn't do a very good job because the second one broke too. But they're horrible cars. You know, unless you could get one dirt cheap for like 500 bucks and it ran and shifted, okay, then what the heck? If it lasts a while, okay. But they're terrible cars. They're one of the worst cars GM ever made. And they make some pretty crappy cars over history. It's really one of the worst ones. GM was never ever a good company at building small cars like the Cruze. Never. That's why companies even like Ford, they don't make cars anymore. They couldn't compete in the small market with the Japanese. So now they're making SUVs, trucks, and the only car they make is a Mustang, which is iconic and it sells itself. King Kang says, Scotty, is it possible to engine swap a 2004 5.3 Silverado for a 16 valve Cummings engine? Well, anything is possible. It just depends on how much work you want to do. But I mean, come on now, you're going from a GM gas lean car to putting in a Cummings diesel engine. The modifications that you would need would be a mess. The fuel system. Now, you're not going to have an ignition system because it's a diesel, so you don't have to worry about that. But you're going to have to find a transmission and drivetrain that'll bolt on that will fit on that truck. It would be one in insane job. But people do all kinds of crazy stuff. When I was a kid, I saw a guy put in a radial aircraft engine, eight cylinders, in a Volkswagen Beetle. I mean, you can do whatever you want if you really want to spend the time, but I don't know if I'd go that far. Limo Edge. I need to buy a new Toyota-like reliable TV set. What brand do you advise me? Well, I gotta say, the Samsung TVs are excellent. I've had them for ages. My wife teaches grandkids. She uses a Samsung. She's got a Samsung phone. And so she can be on there for an hour teaching them stuff, different parts of the country. It works great. I found with so many other TVs, you can't really mesh that well. You can't do live broadcasts back and forth and they can't sit there on their TV and their phone and watching them when she's teaching them. It really makes a big deal. Then when you're just visiting with people, it's the same thing. It's like you're there when we're sitting in the living room and we're in Tennessee and we're talking to the grandkids and Austin, and I found the Samsung ones last an awful long time. Uh, truthfully, I've never had one break. Well, actually, I had one break, but that's when I moved from Houston to Tennessee. And when we hit a giant bump in the moving truck, it went up and down about three feet in the pothole. And then the giant TV fell against my motorcycle. Luckily, it didn't hurt the motorcycle because it was worth a lot more than TV. So we got a new TV here, but it's a Samsung too. I got to say, they work pretty good. Transdisciplinary Chimera says, oh, that's a great name. Scotty, my dad is the worst cheapskate ever. How can I get him to repair his car? Use the Scotty explanation, okay? He's cheap. So am I. I maintain my cars. I change the oil all the time, change the filters. I want them to last. If you don't fix a car, eventually big things will break. You'll have to get another car, which costs a lot of money. Things like brake jobs, tune-ups, oil changes, changing the coolant. Watch my videos. Do it for him. Maybe, you know, if he's that cheap, you know, maybe he keeps his car so long that uh, when he do get old, he buys another one. You'll get one that was maintained by yourself because he didn't want to do it, but you'd do it. Just get him to pay for the oil and filter. If he's that cheap, he shouldn't be driving a car if he won't even pay for the oil to have you change it. <laughs> Explain it all to him in logical terms, though. If he really is cheap, he'd understand, yeah, you know, cars cost too much money. I got to take care of this one I have. <laughs> so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.